Hello, and welcome back to this Library of Runa series. In this video, we'll be taking on the Leo Association Section 2, Episode 2. This reception gives us a bunch of new tools, so let's get started. The Leo Association Section 2, Episode 2 is a two-act fight, with the first act being identical to Episode 1, so I'll just give the TLDR here. Avoid clashing with sturdy defense, while prioritizing clashing into Full of the Sword, Fleet Edge, and Emotional Turbulence. Conserve your health and try to get your librarians to an average emotion level of 3. Act 2 is where the real meat of this fight is. There are two generic Leo Section 2 fixers, just like in the first act, but the other three members are the main three that you saw in the cutscenes. Mei has the standard fervor and speed of the Leo Association, as well as her unique passive, Remain Vigilant in Peace. This passive restores 25% of the user's stagger resistance whenever they gain an emotion level, unless they're staggered, in which there will be no effect. Her deck consists of two frontal assault, an inner ardor, an emotional turbulence, and three new cards. The first one is High Kick, a 1 cost with one fairly strong blunt die that draws a page on hit. This isn't a very threatening page as a lot of your pages have a block on one that can mitigate it, for example Repressed Flesh or Geeky Gig. Her next card is All Out War which is shared with Cecil and Lowell. This page isn't too hard to contend with if you have your 3 cost bombs, and easier to ignore than Inner Order because its offensive dice is 2 power lower. Her last page is Tia San Kao. This is a 3 cost with a weak 1, but a very strong 2 that inflicts between 1 and 6 burn on hit depending on the user's emotion level. Additionally, it has an average pierce counter die. This page is quite hard to beat, as good cards with a block on 2 are rarer than blocks on 1, and cards like a golden opportunity and sturdy defense get countered by this page because the weak 1 makes the evade die that they have very likely to win, then promptly lose to the 8-21 to roll. Your best bet is to mitigate it with a card like extract feel with an offensive on 1 and a block on 2, or a card that has a block on 1 and 2. Now, let's move on to Cecil. She has the standard Leo passives, and Firm is a Great Mountain, which heals the user for 15% of their max HP whenever they gain an emotion level, up to a max of 20. Her deck consists of 2 Frontal Assault, 2 All Out War, an Inner Ardor, an Emotional Turbulence, a Taishan Kao that you can't see, and 2 new cards. The first one is Gale Kek. This is a 2 cost with a single strong pierce die that draws a page on hit. Additionally, it has a slightly below average pierce counter die. This page falls into a similar category as High Kick, being fairly easy to mitigate with a block on 1. Cecil's other page is Iron Wall. This is a defensive focused page with two fairly strong block dice and a weak pierce on 3. Additionally, on use, it gives the user 1 endurance next scene, or 2 endurance at emotion level 3 and higher. This page is fairly easy to ignore, as its only offensive dice is a 2 to 6, and the endurance doesn't matter too much as Cecil doesn't have many defensive dice. Finally, we have Lowell. He has Fervor, Remain Vigilant in Peace, and Firm as a Green Mountain, and two new passives. The first is his unique passive, A Fighter That Never Retreats. This passive gives one strength and endurance whenever the user goes up in emotion level. His other passive, and one we'll be seeing more often from here on out, is Speed 3. This page's effect is between Speed and Speed 2, giving one extra speed die initially, but emotion level 3, giving an extra speed die, which means you'll have a max of 4 speed dice at emotion level 4. Lowell's deck consists of 2 Frontal Assault, 2 All Out War, 2 Flow of the Sword, 2 Emotional Turbulence, and his unique page Forming Storm. This is a very unique 4 cost with 1 die, however, on use, it removes all dice from the page, meaning it won't do anything, and add a mass attack to his hand next scene, Raging Storm Harm. This is a 1 cost mass individual that rolls 8 to 20 and inflicts 3 burn on hit. You'll see this page coming so you can prepare for it, but realistically, you aren't going to be able to beat an 8 to 20 with a single die, so you might end up just tanking it. Thankfully, Forming Storm is single use, and Raging Storm Harm is only usable on the scene after you play Forming Storm, so you won't need to deal with it more than once. A couple things to note about Forming Storm are that if it clashes against the counter die, the counter die will end up free hitting once, and since the die gets removed on use, the page can be used to roll against mass attacks fairly effectively. Since you want to get his page, I'd recommend killing Lowell last, but if you're struggling with the reception, then killing him first will make the fight easier. Much like the first episode, this act is all about threat assessment. Prioritize clashing into emotional turbulence, fleet edge, and flow of the sword, mitigating high kick, gale kick, and taishan kao, and avoid clashing into iron wall, sturdy defense, and raging storm harm. You might also want to bring extra sustain passes in the form of haulers, keeping stride, or even corpse cleanup. 
After you've beaten the Leo Association Section 2 and gotten their pages, there are a few considerations for your decks. May and Cecil's passives are alright, but I would say worse than the Haulers, as you're likely to lose some effectiveness, especially in the early emotion levels. A fighter that never retreats is a bit better and is quite cheap, but I wouldn't be in a rush to put it on anyone, especially since Lowell's page is very good at this stage in the game. For combat pages, I would avoid using high kick as you generally don't need more card draw in blunt decks other than Will of the Prescript and Repressed Flesh, but if you're trying to avoid singleton then it can work decently. All Out War is, in my opinion at least, a superior page to Inner Ardor as its rolls are already fairly high, being able to contend with most 2 costs, so being slightly weaker for one less light is a very good trade off, and it can be slaughtered into slash focused or generalist decks. Gale Kick isn't terrible to use in Pierce focused decks, as counter dice on a 2 cost are somewhat rare, but like High Kick, generally, if you're running Singleton, you probably don't need more page draw, and the counter die doesn't make up too much for it. Iron Wall is a good option for defensive focused decks that aren't reliant on charge generation, but generally, defensive focused decks are still somewhat mediocre. Taishan Kao is exclusive to main Sea Souls page, and I recommend slotting it into their decks should you choose to use them. Finally, Forming Storm is a fairly divisive page. I'm personally of the mind that mass attacks are inherently very strong, and it's worth using almost all of them, but I know many people say that Forming Storm is bad and not worth using. I'd say use your best judgement and do what feels best for you. In terms of actually building a Lowell, May, or Cecil deck, there isn't much direction given by their passives and unique pages, so it's another generalist strategy. If you're running 3 light regen, will of the prescript, emotional turbulence, and their exclusive page, that'll leave you with 3 open slots. I'm personally going to run creek, automated movement, and repressed flush with blunt power boosters, but there are a plethora of different builds that you could run. In the next video, we'll be taking on the next episode of the Thumb Syndicate. I'll see you soon, and as always, thank you for watching.